Hey guys, welcome back to the Exact Boys Basketball Virtual Camp. I'm here joined by Coach Andrew and Coach Ethan. I'll let them introduce themselves in a minute. Today we're going to go over email etiquette, do's and don'ts of emailing, when to email, how to email, what we're putting in the email. Uh, just everything you guys need to know uh, about contacting coaches and obviously emailing is the primary form of initiating contact with these coaches. So it's you know it's the first impressions it's super important so we're going to really touch base on um how to go about doing that uh so ethan you want to take it away you introduce yourself sure hey guys um ethan quinn i'm a system and basketball coach at ohio dominican university uh we're based out of columbus ohio um, we're right in the right in the heart of everything um going into my second season so i'm glad to be here with everybody Andrew? Yep, I'm uh, Andrew Habermill. I'm an assistant men's basketball coach at Babson College. Uh, going into my sixth year there, my 11th year overall in coaching. I've worked uh, three years at Boston University in the Patriot League, three years at my alma mater in the top college, and then, like I said, I'm just wrapped up year five here at Babson. Awesome. Okay, let's dive straight in. Uh, let, um, we're just going to go general to start with. Um, you know, how important is it to have a good first impression in that, that initial email for you guys? You know, well, what are you looking for and, and what's going to make you read the email instead of just, you know, chucking it in the trash? Andrew, you want to start? Yeah, I think that uh, one of the biggest things for us is getting an email that's specifically tailored to us. Um, you know, we're receiving upwards of 20 to 30 emails a day from kids in the you know 2021 2022 classes and a lot of them are coming through you know services like ncsa or you know just blast emails where we can tell very easily it's being sent to multiple coaches at once um we'll read them but they don't quite catch the same interest as a student that'll reach out you know specifically to us at babson talking about what we offer and um, addressing it specifically to us in terms of just sending it to the four coaches on our staff as opposed to seeing you know 60 or 70 other coaches in that that two line on the email so mass email is a, is a big no yeah it doesn't really leave a great impression with us um it, it shows that you know you're interested in playing college basketball but it doesn't show why you are reaching out to us specifically right so so what kind of research can the kids do that would be able would allow them to have that you know personal connection with Babson? I think for us, like, we're a unique school to begin with. We're a business-only school, so we don't have a lot of majors that, you know, kids might be looking for, whether it's, you know, pre-med or biology or history mm -hmm. or political science, whatever it may be. So for us specifically, it's something really simple is just knowing that we're a business-only school. So when you write, yeah. you know, you're not talking about how interested you are in studying communications with us, because that's pretty much a non-starter here at Babson. <laughs> yeah. Um, Likewise, like I said, just simple stuff like sending out the email dish to us as opposed to, you know, BCC and us along with other schools. Um, yes, yeah, crazy the amount of times that you have kids, hey coach, um, I'm really interested in the athletic training program and it's, well, we don't have an athletic training program. So, what you know, what is it you're interested in? So, I think that's super important to, um, it just shows the coaches that you you put in the effort and, and you, you care about, you know, your education and where you want to play and, and that you've taken the time and done the research. I think that's, you know, it's obviously, the, again, the first impression. Yes. Ethan, do you have anything to add? I, I think that's great. Um, there's nothing more than confusing to me than getting an email about talking about how interested they are in a major that we don't have or how they, they've watched a lot of film on our, on our guys, on our team, and they're, they could fit in with us. And then you watch their film and they do nothing the way we do it. You're like, wait a second. No, that's not it. So like, just, just be honest. Like, and if you're going to send that mass email, it better not include personal details. It better not include that personal touch. Um, I think the other thing for me and coach, I don't know if you're the same way, but for me right away, that subject line, what you put in there, what, what, what makes you different? What, is, what in that subject line makes me want to read that email instead of just leaving it sit there or deleting it or whatever? Like something, put something in there that's going to make me interested in you. Put something about our school. Put something about our coaching staff. Do something that makes me go, well, I want to read what's in this email. I want to watch this, this highlight. I want to, there's something there more than just five, five, 10 point guard, 21. 
like do something, you know, and that also leads to that. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Don't tell me you're six, five, if you're six, one, don't put in your, don't put in your subject line that yep. you're six, five, if you're six, one, because I'm going to watch your film and go, if, if that kid's six, five, then I'm at six, seven, I'm about seven, four. So just be <laughs> honest, like put something, put something that makes me intrigued, but be honest at the same time. Yeah, because the, the email is, you know, basically a, a marketing strategy for the, for the kids. You know, how, how are you selling yourself, you know, letting the coaches know that you're interested um, and showing interest in the school? So it is, it is, it's so important to get yourself on the coach's radar and the, only, and the way to do it is that initial email. And that's what kind of gets the ball rolling with all the correspondence coming up later. And you were talking about, you were talking about like first impressions and, and coach will smile with this. Like you get second chances in life. Sometimes, sometimes you get second chances in life, but a first impression is called a first impression because you don't get another one. You know, like that's, we we're lucky enough that we're blessed to get second chances in life one way or the other. Some there's sometimes we get second chances There's sometimes we don't, but a first impression is called a first impression because you don't get that back. And it's, it's so important of how you relate and, and correspond and just reach out. It's, it's, it is a make or break from that first impression standpoint. Yeah. It's really hard to kind of backtrack from, from that first email. If it's not done for us, yeah. like I had a specific instance, maybe a month ago where a kid emailed me talking about how interested he was in studying marine biology at our school. And I emailed him back and politely was like, well, we don't really offer that. And then he then sent, you know, a couple follow up emails talking about, well, you know, I, saw that you do have for this as a concentration da, da 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 but at the end of the day like in my heart of hearts i know that he's not interested in really studying that he's just trying to appease us and like it's just not gonna work and it just creates yeah. more work on our end and also is just setting himself up for disappointment later because it's somebody that we're not gonna recruit and and that stuff is is the basics that is you know literally taking the five minutes out of your day to go onto the website mm -hmm. getting the coach's name right make sure you're emailing the right people you know, like you said do they have my major that stuff is just the foundation of the effort that you have to put in you know to start this correspondence 100%. so when you get that wrong it's you know you can question if you know question more things about about the the player and on the flip side, like when you get it right, it, at least for us, leaves a great impression as a Division three school. We can't offer scholarships, so our recruiting is slightly different than it is at the scholarship level. But mm -hmm. Akita emails me, and he's like, hey, I'm really interested in business. Not only that, but I'm really interested in entrepreneurship. And I know that you've been ranked number one in the country the past 25 years at that. Like, all of a sudden, I know that this is a kid that we'll be able to potentially yield if we decide to recruit because he is yeah. changing than us. And then we'll figure your interest. Yeah, we'll figure out the basketball stuff later. That stuff's right. easy for us. I mean. We're, we're pretty blessed. We're a good program. We're able to kind of, you know, figure out if you can play or not for us pretty quickly. But mm -hmm. finding out whether or not you're genuinely interested in us is a lot harder. So if we know off the bat that, like, this is somebody that is extremely interested in our school based on that first email, everything else starts to kind of flow after that a lot more easily for both parties. Mm -hmm. um, Ethan, Andrew mentioned, obviously, being a D3 school, no scholarships are slightly different. Is it any different for you guys being D2 and their scholarships being involved in how you communicate with the kids? Uh, honestly, money really doesn't come up until towards the end of the process, just mm -hmm. because I don't want to tell a kid right out the gate, like, yeah, you're a scholarship kid to us or you're, you know, like, I, I want to know more about you. I want to like, like Andrew said, like, we'll get to the basketball stuff. I want to know if, if John Smith emails me, I want to know what John Smith's about. Mm -hmm. I want to know where, I want to know about John Smith's mom and dad. I want to know about John Smith's high school. I want to know, because if you can't pass that stuff, if you don't give me a good impression on that stuff, I don't care if you're really good or not. Scholarship ain't going to come up. Mm -hmm. So I, I think even from the, the scholarship standpoint, it, it doesn't come up right away and it shouldn't come up right away because you're only going to set yourself up for failure if it comes up right away. Like I, we really take pride in, we want to know you. We want to know what you're about. We want to know, you know, do, do you do community service? How are you with your brothers and sisters? Do you go to church? Like, that's not like you don't have to do that stuff, but we want to know, like, is that important to you? And then once we figure out that John Smith is a kid that, man, he, that kid's going to fit in with us, then we address the basketball stuff. 
Then we go, okay, is this kid a walk-on that potentially earns money? Is this a kid that's just a program kid? He's going to be a walk-on. Uh, can we get him a good academic package, which is kind of like the D3 stuff. We work with academic packages. Or is this a kid that not only is he going to be a great program kid, this kid's also good enough to earn money to pay for school. Right. Yeah. That's a great point. You bring up the community work. So, you know, you're not only looking for basketball information in these emails. So let's kind of get into the substance of the email. What, what information do you want to see? Um, how, how are they laying it out? Because for me, it sounds like you're looking at athletics, like academics and, and community, kind of off the court stuff. So maybe can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so for me, and Andrew, chime in whenever you want to, man. Um, I don't want a long email. There's, don't write me a book. Yeah. Give me, give me bullet points. Tell me why you're different. Tell me what you're going to bring to the table. And once again, be honest. Tell me if you're six five. Tell me. And if you're five ten, that's okay. Tell me that. If you averaged sixteen points a game, tell me that. Don't tell me you averaged twenty one points a game. Just be honest with me. If you if you go to church, tell me you go to church. If you volunteer at the soup kitchen, tell me that. Short bullet points. Tell me why you're different. Send me film. Don't send me an email without film. Like. Send me some film because I don't want to read through an email and then have no film and have to reach back out. I know that sounds kind of petty, but make my life easy, you know, like, and that's, that's not me being bigger than you or better than you. But at the end of the day, Andrew's going to smile. We have a lot on our plate every single day, especially as an assistant coach. So send me a couple bullet points of what makes you special, why coach Quinn should recruit you, send me your film. And then that's where I can take it from there and decide if this is somebody I want to reach back out to, if somebody I want to establish a connection with, or if this is just not, he's not a, is not a kid for us. So that for me, I want short bullet points. I want you to put things in there that make me really go, this kid's interesting. This kid, this, this is okay. This isn't just the normal high school kid that's dropping 16 a game that, no, no, no. I want to know why you're going to make an impact for us. And I, I think that's big for me. Kids up and down the country can drop sixteen points a game. You know, you're not it, that's you're not alone in that in that aspect. But what what separates you? And I think you brought up a good point with the community stuff. It's it's a good connecting point. You know, if, again, if you take the time to go on the the website and you see in the newsfeed, um, you know, men's soccer team or boys basketball team, women's lacrosse team, when and done, uh, community service X, Y, and Z that then could be that connecting point that you use. Hey, I noticed you guys did this. I've gone and you know, done that. And that then just creates that personal connection with you and the coach. And again, puts you in, in, in a front foot. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think that the most important thing, like coach mentioned, like Ethan mentioned, was you want to include stuff that makes our lives a little bit easier. We don't want to track down all this different information about you. Like I said earlier, we're getting, you know, 20 to 30 emails a day multiply that out by 365 days a year that we have to plow through, you know, and it sounds callous to say plow through, but that's genuinely what we have to do with all the other stuff we have going on as, you know, coaches. And so make sure that you're including your academic information. If you're, if you're looking at a high academic school, you know, we need to know your GPA. If you, obviously this year is different with, you know, testing and whatnot. If you haven't taken the SAT or the ACT, that's fine, but include that so that we're not sitting there wondering if you did and just didn't do well on it, whatever it may be, you know, include, for us, you know, again, at the high academic school, what type of classes you're taking? Are you taking AP curriculum or are you taking college prep curriculum? One's not necessarily better than the other for us, but again, it's just helpful information for us to know um, in terms of us deciding whether or not we think that, you know, further correspondence is really gonna be worthwhile for both of us. Um, you know, like coach, or including your email, highlight tape, and even more so like right now with everything, you know, kind of being up in the air in terms of summer basketball and club basketball, trying to include some full game footage. I mean, I'd be shocked if there's a high school in America right now that doesn't record all of their games and have them up on huddle or crossover. So include a full game because, you know, coach will laugh about this. We've never seen a kid miss a shot and highlight it, you know, in my 11 years doing this, everybody's, you know, a thousand for a thousand. Uh, the whole game tape's really going to tell a story. And, you know, as coaches, we know that you're in a cherry pick your best game, but it's still better to see you in the flow of action than to see, you know, 18 straight 
you know, layups followed by 18 straight made threes. Like, that's the bare minimum for a college basketball player. We want to see what you can actually play in a basketball game. And it includes us watching you for a full game rather than just snippets here and there from, you know, cherry pitching your best games. Okay, so it sounds like you need, um, you know, your basic information of who you are, where you're from, grad year. I think grad year is obviously super important. That could potentially be in the subject line as well. Um, grades, GPA, that academic requirements. And obviously that's super important to both of you guys. One, being an academic institution. Two, being able to get athletic money. If you've got two kids that are around, you know, same ability level, but you've got one kid who's that much more academic, you're probably going to go with the academic kid because you'd be able to give them a better package with athletic and academic money. So those obviously are super important points. Then going into the, um, your athletic accomplishments, again, sounds like not bragging too much, just give kind of bullet points about them. Yeah. Um, and then it, you, you should include video. And the other thing with the athletic part that I would always throw in there is, you know, put in some contact information for your high school coach. Put in some contact information for your AU program. Like, who can we call to, for a better like term, do a reference check on you? Um, and basketball is a really small community. Like, we all know each other, you know, within our regions, within the country. So maybe I don't realize that, you know, a high school coach that I know really well switched schools and you're actually playing for him. By including that, it makes it a lot easier for us to get in contact with that person, you know, reach into that relationship and get more honest feedback about who you are as a person, student, and an athlete. Agreed. Um, so when, when kids are uh, emailing you, something as simple as email address, I just want to address that just because me as a coach, I've had kids email me here had the same clearly had the same email address since they're about 11 12 years old um how important is it just to kind of when that initial email comes up to see a professional email address and maybe talk if, if you've got any um examples of bad email addresses either one of you uh I, man uh <laughs> so once again, I, I know we, I know we've hit on this, but it's so important, and, and Andrew is going to keep smiling. First impressions are so important, and when we see the first thing on my phone when it pops up is your email address and your subject line. It's it's that, and then it has preview content on the bottom. So when I look, and and just like you said, if it's your email address that I'm like, this kid's had the same email since he was the coolest eleven year old in the sixth grade, and that email address is why it's already going to make me go, what am I about to look at? Like it already, it already makes you, me judge you without even knowing anything about you. And it's like, especially if it's on top of a terrible subject line, but anyway, but like the email address, if I look at that and I'm like, Oh geez, sometimes I might not even open it for a couple of days. Sometimes I may forget about it because I already am going, this can't be that serious. You know, like this, this can't be, this can't be that important. If you're not going to pay attention, you know something that small or if you're not going to be aware of something that small why am I going to spend my time trying to recruit you you know and that's that's harsh but that's also the reality of our business like I'm going to speak for my example if I'm going to offer you money to pay for your school and you can't even send me a, a normal email address why would I pay for some of your schooling you know if you can't pay attention to something that small and I know that's nitpicky but it's also big and it's also real so that's that's just my that's my viewpoint on it yeah, I don't, I don't think we're saying, obviously, to you haven't got to get rid of the core email address that you feel like you're, you know, connected to it. But maybe you can have a separate email address for recruiting. Just very, you know, very simple. Could be first name, last name, grad year at gmail.com or whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, I think, obviously, you're right with it being that first thing you see. It needs to be appropriate. It needs to be professional. It needs to – your time and effort works both ways. When the coach sees that you've put time and effort into this process – You'll, you'll be reciprocated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I always go back to like the, you know, if you showed your grandmother this, you know, would she be okay with it kind of philosophy? Like you have a really, you know, quote unquote cool email address and it's got, you know, a little like flavor to it. Like, is it something your family would be proud of knowing that you're sending this out to, you know, adults that are representing not just yourself, but your school, your family, you know, where you're from, your basketball program you play for now, like, those are all little things to take into consideration. Even just beyond email, even on your social media, your Instagrams, whatnot. Like, if 
you are going to post that sort of stuff. Keep it on private because one of the things that we'll do right away, if, you know, we watch a highlight tape we like you is we'll throw your name in Doodle and what are the first two things that always pop up in Doodle? It's going to be your Instagram and it's going to be your Twitter. And I'll peruse those sometimes, you know, sometimes looking for more film because, you know, p people retweet highlights, people retweet mixtapes, whatever, but also just to kind of get a better sense of who you are as a person like Ethan's been talking about and what other kind of values you uphold. And, you know, I'm not saying that you have to put on, you know, an Instagram or a Twitter that perceives you, makes you perceived one way when that's not actually who you are. But if you do feel like what you've been putting out there isn't reflective of you or going to put you in the best light, then just put it private so that only your friends can see it. And then, you know, no harm, no, harm, no foul either way. Yeah, I think social media is obviously um, just at the forefront of, of a lot of things right now. And it can be just as much as a positive platform as it is a negative I think and like you said if kids are putting up highlight um, stuff if you know people putting up maybe games or schedules if kids are putting up you know work done in the community that is a positive platform for them to use flip side of that you've got stuff going up that maybe coaches don't want to see whether it's um, you know recreational drugs or alcohol or just you know things that you don't want associated with your school that is an easy no for coaches you know putting in a kid's handle seeing the first couple of tweets or first couple of pictures yeah no thank you you've just you've just you know de-recruited yourself from that school and I think yeah. having a clean social media as much as it's easy for us to say now that we're older you know hindsight is twenty twenty. at the time kids what they post think it's cool and and you know they're it, it, it isn't you know but yeah. like you said keep it clean keep it private uh, and then coaches won't have a problem right and like even like to use myself as an example like my twitter is public because i use it for work my instagram is private because it's for me my family and my friends and you know i get dms on uh, twitter all the time from kids that want to be recruited and i get friend requests on instagram all the time from student athletes that i don't know that quickly mm -hmm. the, you know the no thanks because again that's my area for me to be private in with my friends and my family yeah and well you see coaches now put at the bottom of their emails they have their social media handles mm -hmm. again it's a great it's a great recruiting tool yeah exactly exactly but yeah there's but, a time and a place for everything and you know correct. what you try to do on those platforms should dictate how public you want them to be correct i'm going to give you a couple of questions we had a couple of good ones come through while we've been talking um Let's start with Asaya Hill out in LA. How often should a potential player reach out to the coach to let them know the player is interested? Uh, for me, um, if you reach out and you don't hear anything in a week, you know, two weeks, there's nothing wrong with you reaching out again. There's nothing wrong with you reaching out again. If you don't hear anything again, I'd probably give it a little bit. And I, to me, is like, I usually go with two. Um, if you don't hear anything after two emails, then I would just kind of give us some time. There's nothing wrong with, you know, down the road reaching out again and be like, hey, coach, like, try to connect with you a couple months ago. Hope you're doing well. Here's some updated film. Or I, I retook my ACT and my ACT went up to a 25 instead of a 21. Like, if you have some new information to bring to me, okay. But like, don't don't do it weekly don't do it every three days like if we want and, and this is this is the reality if we want to email you back or if we want to call you we will email you back or we will call you if we want to communicate with you like we will reach out so for me if i get emails after emails after emails from the same kid it just makes me like like it's it's overwhelming a little bit and it just makes me go like you have to understand if we want to recruit you if we want to talk to you, if we want to learn more, then we will. And just because it's not, you're not going to be a part of our program, there's a thousands upon thousands of places for you to go. So just because you don't fit in with us doesn't mean you don't fit in somewhere else. So for me, it's like after two no responses, I would just give it some time and then bring me some new information. Yeah, I would echo that. I mean, I would say if we don't respond to you right away, give it a week or two. Um, a lot of time, you know, especially like depending on the time of the year, we could be on the road for, you know, two, two straight weeks. Like I'll check my email, but I'm not going to sit at my computer, you know, at 12 o'clock at night when I've been in the gym for the last 14 hours watching yeah. games to plow through the 20 emails I've gotten. Um, so just being kind of cognizant of 
where we are in the calendar. Again, it's the middle of February. Like, I'm checking the emails, but I'm dropping them in a folder to check when the season's over because we're trying to win our conference tournament and get back to the national championship game again. So, you know, we're a little bit preoccupied there. Um, but, yeah, I would say if you don't hear back from the first one, you know, wait two or three weeks, reach out again. And then another thing you can do is kind of switch it up a little bit. Like, have your coach reach out after a few weeks as well, you know. Have somebody that knows you really well that's in the basketball world speak on your behalf to us if we haven't gotten back to you. Because, again, our networks are pretty far and wide. So, you know, you're, you might just be reaching out to us via email, not knowing that your coach has our number and can test us about you that night, you know. So the more people that you can have to kind of advocate for you and not do it all at once but spread it out is probably the most, you know, beneficial for you as well. Yeah, I think club coaches have to be the, the biggest advocates, especially if you're at clubs that, you know, are bigger clubs. This is what these guys are paid to do, mm -hmm. you know, and they train you during the week. And the whole point is for you to go on to college. So if if they are not reaching out to college coaches for you, if they are not, you know, putting the feelers out, saying if they're interested, if they're not giving you honest feedback about what level you should be playing at, they're doing you a disservice. And I think that is something obviously to address as well. Um, you've answered Marquise's question, but I'm going to read it. Um, how often do you as coaches respond to emails? Uh, what do you say to a kid that you have no interest in? I think you've addressed the whole how often you can respond to them. But <clears throat> do coaches um, respond to kids that are not interested? Or is it just one of those where it's like you just don't ever respond? We respond um, but partly because, you know, both at my previous job and here at Babson, you know, we're essentially an arm of ambitions. Like we represent the school and we're working really hard to get student athletes into the school, um, you know, and meet the academic requirements and whatnot. And so as a result, like we try to be as upfront as possible with students because we don't, you know, necessarily want somebody that liked Babson a lot not to hear from us and then end up contacting admissions, contacting somebody at the schools, being like, hey, I reached out to the basketball coach and never heard back. So we kind of take pride in responding to all of the emails um, when we can. You know, that might not be immediately, it might be three or four weeks later, but if we're not interested, we'll try to, you know, lessen the blow as much as we can and talk about how great the school is and, yeah. you know, the opportunities that we have potentially for walk-on positions and, you know, the tryout process and whatnot. But um, we make it fairly clear that, you know, we can't guarantee you a roster spot um, as upfront as possible about that. While we're not a scholarship program, you know, we get a certain number of supports with admissions every year, and we try to treat those as our scholarship offers. So if we right. can't guarantee you a, an opportunity, we're going to put that in writing in an email so that if you do enroll at our school and you do try out and you don't make it, then, you you know, we're not dealing with the AD, you know, and the the miscommunication where you thought that you were guaranteed a basketball experience and we're not giving you one. So right. we try to be as upfront as possible with that. It's a tough conversation to have, but, you know, at least in my world, like, we'll let you know, you know, if, if it's not going to work out. It's kind of the same the other way around as well. You know, if you're interested in the kid that you reach out to and you don't hear a response, it works the same way. You know, coach, you, you have to expect some kind of communication if – if you're emailing a coach, emailing a coach, they're not responding because they're not interested. You've got to try and think of it on the flip side. If a coach is emailing you because they've seen you at tournament, you're not interested in the school, a simple, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking elsewhere or you don't have the major I'm looking for. Like just, it saves everybody that time and effort. Yeah, we always say like, you know, the best answer is always yes, because everybody's happy then. But the second best answer is no, because then you don't waste your time, you know, yeah. chasing us and we don't waste our time chasing you. So that right. honestly, it's huge. Uh, Ethan, you mentioned earlier how important it is for you to receive film on these emails. Alan out in Little Ferry, New Jersey has asked, how should I go about emailing coaches if I don't have film? So I think for me, um, I'll, I'll go back to what I talked about, and I'm not trying to repeat myself, but I also want you guys to understand how important it is. If you don't have film especially, you got to tell me something that makes you different. Like you, you have to, if, and as, as sad as this is, it's also the reality of our business. If you don't have film and you're doing everything the same way everybody else is doing it, it's probably going to be hard for us to recruit you. And that, and that's just as honest as I can be about it. If you're, if there's not something different about you, and then we have nothing to go off of, of your playing ability, it'll be hard for us to recruit you. And that's no disrespect. That's no, we don't like you. It's just 
that's – we get – you know, Coach said we get 40 emails a day. If we got a kid that he's, he's averaging 13 points a game like everybody else and he was second team all league like everybody else and he has no film and his grades, he's got a 21 ACT and his GPA is a 2.9, that kid doesn't really give me much to go off of. And, and it's hard for me to spend time on that kid if another kid has – a little bit better stuff and has film. So, you know, it, sometimes it's just the reality, the honest truth. And then that's kind of how it is. So if, if my advice is there are so many ways to get film mm -hmm. it, and, and it, with technology nowadays, there's no reason you shouldn't have some film. Have, have your girlfriend, have your best friend, have mom, have coach take their cell phone and just record you play for three minutes. It's like get us something. Mm -hmm. Like it, and it, it can be as simple as that. Just record for a five minute stretch that you're playing in an AAU tournament, just send it to us. Just get us something to send to us. Something, I promise you, is going to be better than nothing. Just send us something that at least allows us to click and watch it. Yeah, I mean, if, if, I'm on, if I open up an email and there's no film link, that's a huge red flag for me in the sense yeah. that, like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to devote a good amount of time and resources to try and figure out, you know, just who you are as a basketball player. But I could, again, like Coach Ethan was just saying, be using in a hundred different directions with kids that we already know are good enough, or you know, kids that might be too good that we're still trying to recruit and get after. So, and I think that if you know, if you're in a position where you don't have film, like your high school doesn't film your games or whatever, I would put it right back onto your coach and you know, have him start reaching out to us on your behalf and be like, hey, like if we don't have any film from this past year, we played 25 games. Like the least you can do for me is reach out to these schools that I'm really interested in and just tell them who I am as a basketball player. And, you know, stats are great in an email, but, like, there's so many different levels of not only high school basketball, but college basketball, prep school basketball, that, you know, like 25 points a game in, you know, Division Five Massachusetts public high school basketball is radically different than 12 points a game in the map stat, which is one of the best prep school leagues in the country. And, you know, for us to try to discern based solely off numbers, kind of where you are at, is going to be really an uphill battle, which is where the film comes in so key, because I can watch film and I can tell whether or not you can shoot the basketball at a really high level, regardless of what your three-point shooting percentage clip was in whatever league you're playing in. Likewise, like, I can tell athletically if you can keep up in a scholarship level basketball game, or if you can't, regardless of how many steals a game you average in, again, whatever league you're playing in, for better or worse, I mean, the stats are just, they vary so much from town to town, even within the same county that, yeah. you know, the film is really what tells all. Uh, Josh is coming with a relevant question. Would you like to see recent videos of us working out? Now, obviously, I, I as coaches, you obviously can appreciate that you're not going to get recent game footage in this climate right now probably before Christmas, just after January, February, maybe have some game tape. But what you're seeing now is, you know, the most recent for this pandemic that's happened. Do you want to see, you know, things that have happened in between that? Do you want to see kids, you know, go to a park at basketball court in this time? Is, is that beneficial for you? Is it not? I, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Andrew will smile about this too. I'm all for seeing what you can do, but you hitting a couple jump shots or making a hesitation combo move and going and scoring on nobody, that only tells me so much. Like, I'm sure Andrew has seen some guys in a workout that make you go, oh my gosh, this kid's good. And then you put a body in front of him and he looks like he belongs on the JV team. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and that's as honest as I can be. Like, workouts are great. You got some kids that are monsters in workouts. And then you put a body in front of them where you make them have to play five on five and they completely go away from what you saw in that workout. So I don't mind, especially in this time, let me, let me see you get a little work in. Let me see you go through some cones. Let me see you get some shots up. Like it's not going to hurt. Like, you know, obviously I, I'll take the more film, the better, especially if we're interested. You, we can, Andrew and I, we can see how you move. We can see how explosive you are. We can see how your handles are. Those are important things. Those are important things. But at the end of the day, if you can only do that with the air guarding you, then, we, you know, we can only see so much. So it's not going to hurt you, but I would strongly recommend go ahead and film a workout. Let's see that, but then tag that along if you have the ability with a highlight film or tag that along with your most recent game film. Um, 
and I'll hit on a point you said earlier, don't be afraid to send a bad game film. We're going to find out eventually. Yep. Like I love when I have, I've had kids send me, Hey coach, this right here is my best game from this year. And then below it, they say, coach, this was my worst game from this year. I love that. That speaks volumes to me that that kid is not scared to show you he's human. He makes mistakes. So I, I know that was a little bit more expanded, but don't be afraid to send film. Workouts are fine, but I definitely would tag that along with some game film from January before all this, you know, whenever this took place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would echo a lot of what Ethan just said in terms of the worked out film. Like, it's better than nothing right now because, you know, we're not going to be able to see you play. But at the end of the day, like, I need to watch you play five on five basketball if I'm going to decide whether or not to promise you a spot on our roster. And that's one of those things where that might just be, you know, who we are as coaches, like there might be other coaches out there that will do it for a variety of reasons. We'll rely on that um, just because the level, you know, they're coaching at. Like, like I said earlier, there's different levels even within divisions of basketball um, in terms of resources and what they can, you know, students that they can attract and whatnot. And so for some coaches, like that might be more than enough for them to go off of. But, you know, if we're going to continue to compete for national titles where we're at, like I need to see you play five on five. And that even goes beyond that, just like in general basketball, like, it's Division three school. We can't work out with our guys in the spring, the summer, and the fall. It's just the way the rules are written. They're on their own. But, like, guys will come in the office freshman year and be like, hey, can you put together a workout packet for us? And we'll give them something. But we'll tell them at the end of the day, just play as much five-on-five five as you can, and you'll just naturally get better as a player. Like, the same goes for all that other stuff. Like, you can send us a video of you, you know, doing 25 from five spots going around the arc, and we'll be able to tell whether or not your form is tight and you have a good release and whatnot. But that's – great that might be you know you might be the 15th guy on a roster at that point like if you want to play for us like we ought to be able to know that you're gonna be able to make the decision in the heat of the moment you know when we're playing in front of 5,000 people in the final 40 and that like you're gonna make that shot that pass shot decision you know in the heat of the moment in the half second you have to make that and that's the difference between being you know a college basketball player for us and potentially just wearing the jersey for us. Awesome. I have a question here from Jared in New York, and it may be slightly different because we're, you know, D2 and a D3 coach. What age should I start connecting with coaches? Uh, for us, it's usually like, so for us, we're finished. I know we talked about this before. We're finished with 2020. Our focus is 2021. If you send us film, if you're younger than that, that's great. But to be honest with you, we probably won't pay much attention to it. And it, it's nothing that we don't think you're good enough. It's nothing that we don't think that you can play for us one day. But we are going to focus on that next year because that's where we have to put, for us, we have mm -hmm. an X amount of dollars we're working with scholarship-wise. And we also know that the guys that were graduating, how many spots we're going to have. We don't know two years from now how many spots we're going to have. We don't know what we're going to have transfer-wise. We don't know what we're going to have, you know, with that. So it's not that I don't think it's a good idea for you to reach out, but I can I can tell you from our experience, if I, like, if I get an email right now from a 2023 kid, I might not even watch it. And that's, and that's just as honest as I can be because that's not where our focus is. That, it's not that's, – that's down the road. Now, in two years – I'm 100% open to that. You know, I'll, I'll watch it. But right now, just you – kids that age, just focus on getting better. Focus on making connections with people. Like, get your get your name out there. Maybe a coach does email you, Mac. Maybe a coach is interested in that. But from our standpoint, we are taking it one year at a time. Uh, the only reason we really will connect with anybody younger is if we have, like, a personal connection with them. If it's like a, a kid close to us in Columbus, if it's a kid that's come to our elite camp for the last four years, um, if it's a kid that shows up to our home games, if it's whatever, if we, if little Kevin is a kid that's been coming since he was 10 years old, then we'll listen to a kid from 2023. But other than that, to be honest with you, it's, it's not going to be something we spend a lot of time on. We're really year to year. Yeah, I mean, we're the same way. Like, I can tell you right now that, you know, if you were to email us, the reply you would get would be, Jared, you know, appreciate you reaching out. You know, really happy that you're interested in Babson and our basketball program. Right now we're solely focused on our 2021 class. You know, as we hope to turn the page to the 2022s in February or March, we'll reach back out at that point to get some further information. Um, and that's, you know, I can recite it as I send it out probably four or five times a day. And that's just the, the nature of the beast. And even like when I was at Boston University Division One basketball, like 
even they take it much more on a year to year basis than, you know, you probably think as a high school kid, like everybody reads about, you know, these juniors on June 15th, and their, their offers from the high major schools and thinking that that could be them. But those are the, you know, top 100 kids in the country. Like anybody can pick those kids out of a gym. You know, if you're emailing coaches, chances are, no offense, you're not an ESPN top 100 kid. So, you know, the, the idea that you're going to get recruited or get, you know, offered spots as a junior, you know, at any level really is probably a little unrealistic right now um, just because of, you know, the cycles that the schools are on. Like I said, mid-major, low-major schools even take it year to year. It's very rarely that they're offering a junior. and It's a true offer that the kid can commit to. Um, it's just the, the nature of the beast. We want to see you play a lot before we're going to guarantee you a spot or a scholarship or whatever it may be. And like Coach was saying, we only have so many resources and man hours to do that. We need to focus on the most immediate group that we need to, you know, fulfill. Um, so, like, you know, my out, you're going to see a 2020 folder, 2021 folder, 2022 folder. And if you're not in that 2021 class, it'll get that quick reply and it'll get dumped in that folder. And then, you know, when the season wraps up and we start recruiting your year, then I'll plow back through probably. But up until that point, I wouldn't expect too much. So it seems like emailing a coach in your junior year is neither too early nor too late. Yeah, I think as you wrap up your junior year, that's okay. when you really start to, you know, reach out to schools that you're genuinely interested in, for sure. So I think it's a good time to touch base on contact rules. They're obviously very different with D1, D2 and D3. Um, you know, some kids may think, well, this kid's not, this um, college isn't responding to me, he's not responding to me, he's not interested. But that may not actually be the case if they're under NCAA rules of contact. Is that correct? Yeah, each level has their own set of rules. Um, Division three is much more of the wild, wild west. We don't have like a set start date where we can, you know, can't reply to emails. But I know at Division one, they're, you know, June 15th going into your, after your sophomore year, going into your junior years when, you know, permissible contact can begin. I'm not sure what D2 is. I know Ethan can fill that in. But, um, yeah, each coach is bound by a different set of rules. So having understanding in that regard is important. Uh, uh, the, Ethan, the D2, they're the same as D1? We can we can email you whenever. Um, like, texting, emailing is fine. But the in-person stuff, um, like, go and watch AAU tournaments, like, that kind of thing. Um, there's certain times, kind of like the Division One level, that we can't speak to them. Um, so, but I can... I can call or email anytime I want, uh, but it's that in-person contact of talking that we were not allowed to do for that that period of time, like the Division One level. Um, but yeah, I can I can respond to emails, text messages, phone calls anytime. Cool. Okay, we have a question here from Will in Park Ridge, Illinois. What is the one thing slash a few things you find most impressive when reading an email from a potential recruit? I think, like I said earlier, just seeing that you have done some research on us, that you know that, you know, we're, we're in a national championship program, that you know that we're you know, a fantastic business school, stands out, you know, a bit more for us. And it lets us know that you're genuinely interested in us as a, as a potential option for you, like I said. I mean, the more specific you can get to each school, you know, we're like anybody else. We like to be kind of flattered. We like to be told how great we are at certain things. Like, that's going to leave a positive impression. And, you know, getting a bulk email where you're just spewing out a bunch of facts about yourself, like, that's just going to make me feel like I'm one of 100 and move on pretty quickly. Uh, I think for me, uh, a couple of things is, uh, Andrew made a great point, like, bring up why, why you want to come to Ohio Dominican, whether it's because it's a Catholic-based school or bring it because we're in the heart of Columbus or do your research and like our oldest coach on coach on the staff is 30 years old. Bring up because our, your coaching staff's young and we and I find that attractive instead of playing for a 30 year tenured coach, you know. Um, bring up about you, like bring up, I, you know, serve in my community. Bring up, if you if you go to church, if you have, a, you know, a faith-based relationship, you know, with Christ, bring that up. Like what, whatever it is, just bring up what makes you, you. Let us know what's important to you. And, and I'm going to reiterate it again, when you email coaches, spell their names correctly, you know, like do, do things like that. Like we got one the other day that we just, we looked at each other and we're like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, how did you find that? How did you, you know, make that up? Like, so just, just take time and put effort into things. This is important. These are important. And, and Andrew will smile about this. 
this is really true. If I, if I look at, you can't even put time into researching our school for an email and focusing on little detail of spelling something correctly or whatever the case may be, like, how am I going to feel that when we're watching film, are you really paying attention to the little things we talk about? If we're going over a scouting report, are you paying attention to the little things that we talk about? You know, it, it, it all translates. We want to know like where your focus is. Um, so just little points about you, about us. Why do you want to be in Columbus? Why do you want to play at the division two level? Tell us, if you watched our game against Lake Erie, tell us what you thought. You know, like make it personal. Make us feel like Andrew said it and it's awesome. Make us feel like we're one school, not one of a hundred. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. on the flip side of that, like make sure what you're saying is accurate and true. And hopefully that would be there. Like I had a kid who emailed us back in February. Um, he apparently had watched us play, you know, one of the better teams in our region. And he responded saying that he would step in and be the best shooter in our program. Well, as a team, we shot above 35% from three. We had, you know, a kid that scored 500 points this year that we called Shooty because all I did was shoot threes, and he's going to go play professionally in Ireland. But he's not bad. So don't overstate your value to us either because that's a pretty easy way to turn us off. Like, we're a really, you know, strong shooting team. We have been for the past five years. And so for somebody to walk in and kind of embellish, like, oh, I'll step in and be your best shooter, I like the confidence, but at the same time, like, I don't know who you are, and we got a lot of really talented guys. So don't put down your potential future teammates either. <laughs> There's a fine line to walk there. Yeah. Um, we had a question come in, and we have touched on it. Uh, what does it take for me to make sure the college coaches take me seriously? And I think one, one point you just touched on briefly, Ethan, was um, spelling and grammar. Mm -hmm. I think that in itself – We've already spoke about the research. We spoke about getting the coach's name correct and maybe the team mascot, the team name correct. Those things, but spelling and grammar to show that, you know, you're about to go into college and, and, and while you might not be a wizard at English or anything, but having that basic spelling and grammar yeah. to the point where coaches don't feel like you're texting a friend. The language you use, how you write, you know, can you form a sentence? You, you are not, you're not texting a mate. You know, you're, you're emailing um, maybe your future coach. Mm -hmm. And until you, until you make that personal connection with the coach, it may be Mr. Quinn for now. It may be Coach Quinn further down the line. It could be, hey, Ethan, touching base, looking forward to coming into the program. Until then, until you've got that personal connection, it needs to be professional and it needs to be um, proofread. Research needs to happen. I think that in itself, initially, is what's going to set you apart to show that to show the coach that you are serious about coming to their school. Your email is part of your interview. Yes. It's a job. It's an interview for a job. You're not going to go like after college when you start applying. When I when I applied for the assistant job at Ohio Dominican and I reached out to Coach Winter, it's it's a it's a job. It's an interview. It's it's big and. So even this, this is a business. This is a job. This college basketball, college athletics, not just basketball, college athletics is a job. And we take all those aspects into consideration. And if your first impression is an email and it's part of your interview process and you're throwing some things in there and there's, there's no reason you should have grammar errors. It gives you a red line or if you're texting, it's going to correct it for you. So like if you can't even pay attention to that stuff, that's, that's a big thing for us. It's, it's professionalism right out the gate. Yeah. So I mean I have a brutally hard last name to spell. So unless you're copying and pasting it, like I don't expect you to get it right. But if you do spell it wrong in the email, like again, that's going to leave a pretty sour taste in my mouth. So, you know, easy ways around that. Like I'm, my last name's Habermill, like Coach H. I get emails to say Coach H all the time, which is like more than okay for me because that's how all my players refer to me. Like that's just mm -hmm. you know, who I am. But I'd rather that than somebody, you know, butcher my last name and then tell me how great of a school we are that they really want to come play for us because – you know, at the end of the day, if you want to come play for us, you don't have to work really hard in the classroom. And if you can't be bothered to spell check, you know, my name, that's going to be an issue. Um, and yeah. like you said, like, the more formal you are, you can't go wrong being formal early on. You can go wrong by being casual. I mean, if I get an email that, like you said, reads like a text message, it's like, hey, coach, what's up? You know, I really want to play yeah. that. And I was balling out this past weekend. You know, I don't know if you going to play. Like, I'm probably not going to respond to that the same way I would with a, you know, a more formally traditional written letter. Um, I go back to the whole like grandma rule again. Like 
have your parents read it and like would, would they put their stamp of approval on it that's usually a pretty good rule of thumb but at the same time i'm glad you brought that up you you're you don't want to fall into emailing the parent i think you know parents can sometimes it, it, this is a big decision this is a big process and maybe the kid feels overwhelmed but at the same time you're not directly recruiting the parents you're recruiting the kid you have to learn what he's like what his character's like um is he going to fit into the program is this the right uh, culture for him is this the right fit and the way you're going to do that is by you know building that personal relationship with him not with parents not have your parents be the first one to contact us because the immediate reply they're going to get is that's awesome i'm glad that john is a really good basketball player i would love to hear from him about his interest in our school because if just the parent is interested in you coming and play for us and you're not interested, it's not going to work out. You're going to want to transfer. You're going to be miserable. And likewise, like you said, like, I need to get to know the kid I'm going to be coaching, not their parent. Um, right. There's plenty of time then that's eight months of our process where we'll get to know your parents and there'll be plenty right. involved. We'll come on the visits. We'll talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, just like we talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. But at the end of the day, we're coaching you and we're not coaching, you know, your father. And we need to right. have that relationship with you off the bat before we start involving them. Yeah, so proofreading is fine, but let's not have parents write the email for us. Correct. How should they sign off? Any particular way you want to see them end, end an email? Is, is, is there a particular way? Just be real. Just, just If you want to tell me to have a good day, just tell me to have a good day. If you want to tell me to be, be safe, tell me to be safe. If you tell me if, if Christmas is coming up, say, hey, I hope you and your family have a great Christmas. Just just be real. Just be authentic. Don't be a robot. Like, yeah. be be real. Um, and no, there's no, and he shook his head just like I did. There's no, like, specific, sincerely, no. Just just be real. Just yeah. tell us, you know, hey, have a good day. Hope to hear from you soon. Just be real. Yeah, just be genuine. Yep. You, you are. Okay. Um I'm, I'm going to answer this question because you guys obviously wouldn't know, but Malcolm, you asked the film that we uploaded to this uh, will be reviewed by the presenters. Will we get some feedback? Yes, uh, your video will be given to assigned coaches and you will be given feedback. So don't worry about that. It is coming. Thank you guys, Andrew, Ethan. Really appreciate your time this morning. Um, guys, if you do continue to have any more questions, feel free to uh, continue to write them into the dashboard and we'll make sure we get them answered uh, tomorrow we're going to be touching on um, scholarship and financial aid so all things money uh, it'd be a good one for yourself and probably parents are sitting on that'd be the same time tomorrow uh, guys thank you again hope everybody has a good day and i will see you tomorrow appreciate thank you. it